Okay, uh, let's start with the problem analysis session. So uh, I hope you had a lot of fun with uh, the contest. Uh, so we'll, we'll start, uh, we'll, we'll have the um, award ceremony just afterwards, but we'll start with a brief description of the problem you had to solve so that you uh, can see what kind of techniques could be used for uh, solving them. Uh, so the problem analysis session will be conducted by the uh, judges and problem setters who uh, uh, came up with the problems and who evaluated your submissions. So first of all, you submitted a lot of solutions, a lot in C++, some in C, a lot in Java, some in Python 2, and some in Python 3. So. <laughs> okay, so the simplest problem was City of Lights, and I see a lot of pink balloons here. And the first team uh, took uh, six minutes only to submit a working solution and uh, almost all teams were able to, to solve it. And uh, the idea was just to have an array or a set with a list of, uh, list of lights, all the lights, their state, toggle them when you, you had a number, toggle every three lights, for example, and keep a count of lights off or on as you want, and just you have that in parallel, and uh, by just updating the count as you turn the lights on or off, you were able to have the answer. So the second problem that has been solved is dishonest driver. Uh, 17 minutes uh, after the start of the contest by uh, Team Rocket. Um, it has been solved by relatively few people, 18 teams. Um, so the idea of the problem was to um, compress a string which was given as an input. And, and the notion of compression that we were uh, speaking about here uh, was described uh, like this. So a compressed uh, string is either uh, one character or the concatenation of two compressed string or the repetition of uh, a compressed string a fixed number of time. So how do uh, we solve the problem? We solve this problem uh, using a dynamic, pr uh, a dynamic programming approach in big O of N3. Um, so in the dynamic pr uh, programming approach, it computes the size of the compressed form of uh, any substring of the, of the given string and input. So uh, you compute a function f of i and j, um, which is the size of the compressed form of the substring uh, ui uh, until uj minus 1. So if the substring is limited to one character, then, th then this is trivial. Otherwise, you try splitting the string into any possible uh, uh, cuts, and you try to factorize the string um, uh, using uh, uh, any factor that you find. So then there is another problem, which is how do you find all the factorization of the given substring? And for this, there is many, many ways uh, of doing this, but one of the ways which is possible uh, is to search the second of occurrence of uij in uij uij, um, and, and you can uh, show quite easily that this, uh, from this you can very easily uh, compute all the factors, uh, all the factorization of uij. And for doing this, you can um, do this in linear time using the KMP algorithm, or use uh, 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 your uh, favorite um, uh, fine function from your programming language, uh, which already implements uh, KMP, for example, in C++. So we also have an algorithm in n2, uh, n2 log n, but it's much more complicated and it, in it relies on a, on a compli uh, complicated um, uh, word combinatorics uh, lemma. Oh, yeah. The, the third problem solved was rounding. It was supposed to be easy. It, it happened to be much harder than we expected. Uh, it was solved after 23 minutes by SNS1 and in total by 39 teams. Okay. Um, so uh, the goal of the, the problem is to find the original bounds of rounded values that um, sum up to, uh, were supposed to sum up to 100. So for each rounded value, the minimal and the maximal value are pretty simple. They are 
either rounded minus uh, 0 0.5 or rounded plus uh, 0 0.49, except for 0 and 100, which are 0 or 100. And it's impossible, uh, it's possible if uh, 100 is between the sum of all the minimal value and the sum of all maximal values. Otherwise, it's impossible. So first, uh, you, com you compute uh, all these minimal and maximal values for each rounded value. You sum them up, and you uh, check whether it's possible or impossible. And then for each uh, value, the, um, the result minimal value is going to be um, the um, the sum of all maximal values for other values, so it's going to be 100 minus maxim minus the maximal value that was computed for this specific value. And of course, you cannot go below the minimal value that you computed in the first step. And uh, it's the, um, the same thing for the maximal value. Um, of course, we saw a lot of uh, solutions that uh, outputted negative values or values above 100, which of course were not possible. Um, again, don't use floating points numbers. We warned you on the first day. And uh, we also warned you on outputting correctly um, numbers with two digits after the decimal point. Okay. Ne next problem was blurred pictures. It was solved uh, after 29 minutes by UPC1. Uh, the idea was to find the, uh, the largest square in an area of, um, of, of connected pixels uh, that fits in a square of n by n. Uh, the natural idea is to uh, use dynamic programming on the grid. But if you do that, you are in uh, n by n time, and uh, given the limits, uh, it's too much. There is a time limit. The, the important thing to note is that the perimeter of the area is uh, only linear. So if you go, uh, if you walk uh, along the perimeter, you you just have a linear time uh, to do that, and you can compute the extreme values uh, in line, columns, and diagonals in near not time, so you can compute the biggest square this way. And there is uh, even a simpler solution. Uh, if you notice that you can um, grow the, the larger square starting from the first line and just uh, increasing the size of the square each line if you can, or just uh, changing the starting line if you cannot. That's it. Okay, so uh, this uh, problem was along with rounding, if I'm not mistaken, one of the, the, problem, the two problems which had the most submissions over all of them. About half of you solved, uh, solved it. The first one was, I didn't yeah, see it. Uh, the first one was solved at 37 minutes by Blaise One. Okay, so the idea was to, uh, was to find a, a tour a sort of tour in which you uh, uh, in which you go through an uh, eastbound road. You visit some document, uh, some monuments. You return on the on this road, and then so on, right? So uh, the idea was to uh, was quite simple. Uh, you have to just notice that first of all, the main road will always pass through a monument, right? So that's already you have a you have an indication, right? So a naive solution would just go through all the points and, uh, and verify, but of course that wouldn't pass the time limit. The second thing to notice is that it's sufficient to take the, me uh, the point that sits at the median of the y coordinates, right? So you you would just have to keep the y coordinates and uh, and take the median with a f uh, another small. Uh, small issue that you have for each for each different x value you would only have to keep the extreme values so for instance there you would have 
to only keep the the red points, right? So, and when you have single points, you would have to count them twice. So, in that case, in this example, which corresponds to the second sample you had in your uh, in your problem, you can see that both uh, a road passing through coordinate uh, two or coordinate three would give you the the optimal solution. So now it's Paris by night, so it was solved by only 13 teams, so it's uh, much lower than for the uh, previous problems. And starting uh, after uh, roughly one hour and a half by Team Ratlet. And so uh, the idea is that uh, so you have some naive way to do things. So you have to just choose, I mean, two monuments uh, in Paris and then look at the score you have on the left of your line, the score of you have on the right of your line, and uh, compute the difference and take the absolute value of it. So if you do it uh, just uh, naively, you have, to you have n squared pairs of monuments, and then it takes time uh, n to compute the difference, so it's an n3 algorithm, and it's too much. Okay. But then, I mean, you have tricks to do it in a more efficient way, which is to use uh, some kind of pivotal uh, monument, like the monument number eight. And so first, you start with any other monument, like monument number 12, and then you rotate your line. And I mean, computing some difference after you have already computed the previous one, I mean, you can do it in constant time. So the only thing that is hard to do now is just that you had you to order your monuments, I mean, in the uh, clockwise order, for instance. Okay. And it does the trick. All right. So, Masson's mark was a problem that we uh, we wanted you to be able to uh, implement an image recognition algorithm with very modest algorithmic tools, but it will take some time to implement. And it took some while, indeed, until uh, the first solution was solved, and that was by Ernest Ulm one. Um, the idea is that if you look at the picture, uh, it's a black and white picture, and uh, the black pixels, one part is the frame of the picture, and that's also the, the, the black space between the stones. This is in blue here. Another are just the single noisy dots here in orange, which uh, you can maybe ignore in a first um, a filter. And what is really interesting are the, um, yeah, are the marks. So how do you detect those marks? And there were different approaches. Some people, for example, found the, um, de detected the upper left corner and then look how much you can go back and down, uh, to right and down, and then uh, detect that, that region and other approaches which most people did was to use the um, connected component algorithm, find connected components. And you could do, for example, find the white component and then find out in w how many components these white components are included. So these are the regions inside the marks. This will be one approach. Uh, another approach is to focus not on the white region but on the black one. So if you have a, a connected component of, um, of a mark, you could look at the bounding box and then you could either inspect two specific points or look at the total area uh, in order to find out whether this is an A, B, or C. Yeah. Hi. So Travel Guy was sold after two hours by Team Raclette. And uh, it was mainly a graph algorithm, a graph problem, sorry. We are, you have uh, three points of interest and you are looking at all the nodes that have a good distance compared with the three points of interest. But the idea was to move away from graph and transform your problem into a vector problem. So you take uh, three paths of Jextra algorithm to compute the distance between all points and all nodes. And then you have vectors. And is in these vectors, you want the Pareto optimal vectors. And uh, so there is a key observation here is that if you sort the vectors uh, lexicogra in lexicographical order, then you can see that a vector is minimal if and only if it's minimal among the vectors that comes before it. And you can forget about the first coordinate. So you can, 
uh, look into a 2D problem and you want to maintain the set of a 2D uh, minimal vector. So you can do that with a, a sorted list. So you maintain in session, uh, you maintain the sorted aspect after in session. So you need a three to implement this list. And when you have this list, you want to check whether a point is minimal in 2D by looking at the point just before it. And if it has a, a coordinate that is lower, then it's uh, not, just like here in red, it's not uh, minimal. And in red, you see that the coordinate before is higher. So it's a good point. So we insert it. And when we insert it, it might render some points not minimal. So we remove them. And that can be done, for instance, uh, in STL with a map or a three map in Java. Or I think in Python, you have to uh, compute uh, to build the three yourself. So this was a very hard problem that was solved only by one team before the time limit. Uh, the problem is the following. Uh, you are given four streams of n-bit integers, and you need to find four values whose XOR is 0. The key tool to solve this, kind of this problem is to use the birthday paradox. Uh, and there's a first solution that is unfortunately too slow to pass. Um, it is to, to yeah, it exceeds the time limit. Uh, and basically, the idea of this uh, solution is to mostly ignore the last two streams of values and only try to match integers from the first two streams. A and this is um, doable in 2 to the n over 2. Next. Uh, so this is a faster solution in 2 to the n over 3. And um, the main idea is to um, match integer from the first two streams, but only on the n over 3 uh, least, least significant bits. Uh, so you do this on the first two streams, and you need to generate a lot of, you need to generate also 2 to the n over 3 collisions. You do the same on the last two streams. And then you merge the two uh, to match on the first 2n over 3 bits. If you go to the next slide. So this is how it looks like. Um, you take values from x1 and x2, and you generate collisions that match on the n over 3 least significant bits. Uh, you do the same over the last two streams, and then you uh, generate the final collision. OK. So for this problem, you, you were building uh, strings by repeated uh, um, concatenation and uh, substring extraction. And, the difficult and then you had to compute a sum over this, uh, the final string. And the difficulty here was that the strings wo uh, could be very, very large. I mean, billions of billions of elements for some of these strings, which means that you could not build this as a regular string in memory. OK? So but there is a solution in the literature. Unfortunately, the problem was called strings and not ropes. Otherwise, uh, you would have a clue. Uh, and uh, the idea is, uh, is not to build concatenation, but instead to, um, to keep a representation of concatenations as a binary trees, for instance. That's not the only way to, to do, but uh, you could do it like this. So there is, a, for instance, a, a small string which is uh, built this way on, on the right. And then there are two, uh, two, two, um, two important things if you do that. Another thing that you, you, you can share substrings if uh, these uh, ropes are immutable, which is, which is the case here. OK, and there are keys in the implementation. You should keep the length for each uh, node in, in, the, in such a tree so, so that you can decide in constant time whether you should go to the left or to the right on, on, on both sides. OK, and then on such a trees, you could compute the substrings uh, rec recursively by building new trees out of the, uh, the first trees. And then you could get a quadratic solution uh, overall. OK, so we have very little credit for the very last problem, because actually it's not from us. It's from Knus. OK, uh, it's, a, it's a problem which is described. Uh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So th this problem is described in the forthcoming 
volume 4B of uh, the art of computer programming <laughs> in, a, in a fascicle which is available online on CNUS webpage with the problem and its solution. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the idea is that you want to build uh, grids uh, um, of uh, crosswords without black, black uh, cells, so perfect, uh, perfect crosswords. And so, so the idea was to first build two, two tries data structures with the word vertical and horizontal words. And then doing a backtracking, you could try to fill the grid, for instance, from left to right and from top to bottom. And while doing that, you could maintain pointers into those tries, one for each column and one for the current row. And then at the, at the intersection of the two, of the two, these two tries, when you have to, you have to fill the next cell, you could look up for the, the common branches of the two sub tries, and then, uh, and then keep going like this. And whenever the grid is filled, you have, uh, you have another uh, solution. So this is tricky to, 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 to implement efficiently, and there is an exercise in uh, that fascicle for that with a perfect number for an exercise. Okay, uh, thanks to all the judges for their hard work in uh, designing these problems.